Hello friends, welcome back to Accounts Made Easy. Uh, in this particular video, we are going to start with a new chapter called Standard Costing. Uh, before we go in depth with Standard Costing and other things, first let us try to understand meaning and the definition of Standard Costing. So, let's look at the meaning. Standard Cost is the cost what should have been under a given set of operating conditions. A little technical language in simple words. If everything is perfect, what is the cost that a company would incur to produce a certain unit is what we understand as a standard cost. If we look at the definition of it given by SEMA London, it states that standard cost is the predetermined cost based on technical estimates for materials, labor and overheads for a selected period of time and for a prescribed set of working conditions. Uh, guys, two things that we need to understand here is, first it very categorically says selected period of time. Once we have set a standard, we cannot expect that to remain constant throughout the life of the business. Uh, normally what happens is a standard cost is set for a period of one year. Uh, however, with changing times, uh, the period is decreasing. But yes, there is a predefined time that we have and plus for a prescribed set of working conditions. If there is any change in the working conditions, the standard cost would change. It may decrease or may increase depending on it. One more very important thing that we need to understand from the definition, it says technical estimates for materials, labor and overhead, which also gives us our idea as to what are we going to learn in this particular topic. So we are going to learn standard cost or standard costing for materials, labor and overheads, which means this chapter is divided into three parts. Now a lot of people do ask often, you know, uh, what exactly are we supposed to do in this chapter? Let me tell you what exactly are we supposed to understand here rather than doing it. If I say today, I'm going to produce a certain unit X for which my calculation, that's my standard cost says that per unit, I need materials worth rupees 10. That's it. That's called my standard cost. But do you think when I actually start producing it, I will be able to get exactly 10 rupees per material? Normally, no. It might be 9.5 or it might be 10.25 which means there might be some change than what is expected. That means our actual cost may differ from the standard cost. This change, this difference is what we call as variance. And that is exactly what we are supposed to find here. See, if my cost becomes 9.5 rather than 10, I'm actually spending less. So that's a favorable variance. That's in my favor. It's helping me reduce my cost. But imagine if my actual cost becomes 10.25, I'm spending more than what I should have. That's a negative variance. And therefore, standard costing is quite often commonly also known as variance costing. Because here, our main job is to calculate variances. So in this video, what we are going to do is, we are going to learn various variances which are related to materials or with reference to material cost. Okay, now let's understand at some most common terms that we are going to use when we talk about material cost variances. The first one is SQ or standard quantity. Standard quantity is that amount of material needed to produce one unit of finished goods. That's called SQ. Then we have SP, standard price. See, it's a predetermined price. Right at the start of the period, we are assuming that we should be able to buy material at rupees X. That becomes our standard price. Actual quantity. I assume that to produce one unit of finished goods, I would need certain quantity of raw material. That's my standard quantity. But then while really producing it, 
What is the actual quantity of material I have used? That's called actual quantity or AQ. Actual price, in fact, we have just now taken the example of 10 rupee 950, 10.25. That's called our actual price. Very important is the last term, which is called SQ for AO. Standard quantity for actual output. All right. That means if I'm producing 1000 kgs of finished goods, what is the quantity of raw material that I need to use as per my standard quantity? One thing that you need to remember throughout material variance is that whenever we say SQ, actually what we understand is SQ for AO. Only standard quantity is something that we normally do not use for our formulas. We normally use SQ for AO. So standard quantity which is required for our actual output is what you need to understand. Right? So these are some terms which we are going to use repeatedly in our formulas. Knowing them right here will help us understand formulas in a better way. Right? So now let's look at the formulas of material variances. Uh, material variances, before we start with this, remember there are five that you need to remember. Each one has a different formula. And when you look at the screen now, you can see that for first two variances that you can see, I have written their material A, material B. Now this is based on the assumption that there is more than one input material which is needed. That means to produce one unit of finished goods, say X, I require two different materials, say material A and material B. And they are required in different quantities and their prices are different. And therefore, this is how we have done it. So the first one that we need to calculate is called material cost variance. This is the most common or the basic variance, which means if I'm producing 1000 units of material today, that's my finished goods, what will be my standard cost and what is my actual cost? The difference between the two is called as material cost variance. So if you look at the formula, it says standard quantity into standard price, which makes my standard cost. From that, we will subtract actual quantity into actual price, which is my actual cost. If the answer is positive, that's a favorable variance, which means my actual cost is less than my standard cost. However, if my answer is negative, that's called unfavorable variance because my actual cost is more than my standard cost. Remember for every variance, we may have a favorable or an unfavorable variance. All right, so this is our material cost variance. If we look at the next one, the second one, it says material price variance. That means what is the change in the price? See, if I want to know the change in the price, how I can do it? Actual quantity at standard price and actual quantity at actual price. The difference between the two is my price variance. That's exactly what the formula says. It says AQ into SP minus AQ into AP. Now, using simple mathematics, if I say A into B minus A into C, what we do? We take common A out and in brackets we will write B minus C. That's exactly what we have done. What is more important for you people is that if we want, we can learn even the short formulas which is written in red. For all the five formulas, I have also written down the short formulas, okay? But then advisably, yes, we should be remembering the actual formulas, which is AQ into SP minus AQ into AP, all right? Now, uh, if you look at both the formulas, MCV is actually the total of these two, and similarly, MPV is the total of these two. In exam, most of the times, we will not be using the complete detailed versions we use abbreviations like MCV, MPV and so on, which we are going to do in the next slide. All right. So I hope up to this point you have all understood. Uh, let's move forward to the next three formulas that we are supposed to learn. The next one, the third one, which is called material usage variance. Uh, how much of material have we used it? All right. And to know that how much of material we have used, what we need to actually do is Compare our standard quantity with actual quantity exactly. Perfect. 
but then price because the answer should be in rupees. So both of them are multiplied by our standard price. So the formula we get SQ into SP minus AQ into SP. Look at this very carefully. In both these, we have standard price as a common thing. So in our short formula, we have taken SP out into SQ minus AQ. Our short formula is ready. All right. Now let's look at the fourth one, which says material mix variance. That's MMV. Now here things change a little. This is something new that we have not done, which is called RQ or the required quantity. Sorry, revised quantity. Why revised quantity? Because sometimes due to a lot of factors, the quantity required changes. It does not remain a standard quantity. All right, so we need something which is called as revised quantity or RQ. All right, so it is RQ into SP minus AQ into SP. Look at both of them carefully. Again, SP is common, taken out, RQ minus AQ. Now, look at material usage variance and material mix variance very carefully. All right, now what happens? If you look at the short formulas, SP is common for both of them. AQ at the end is common for both of them. The only thing that changes is for usage, we use standard quantity. For mix, we use the revised quantity. Now, why this happens? See, initially when we started production, we thought we will need two materials A and B in the ratio of 3 to 2. But by the time we came to the actual production, that particular ratio changed. And hence, we might require the change in the quantity and that's called revised quantity. All right, so we got this. Now let's look at the last one, which is called material yield variance. That is the result that we get out of it. It is extremely simple. What's the difference between my standard quantity and my required quantity? Of course, price needed because the variance comes in rupees. So multiply both of them with standard price. All right, so it becomes SQ into SP minus RQ into SP. Now, look at 4 and 5 carefully. Short formula, if you look, SP is outside common item, okay? The thing which has changed is RQ is substituted by SQ and AQ by RQ. That is the reason why all these three formulas have kept on the same screen. 3, 4, 5, look at them very carefully. In all three are standard prices common. And the three items, standard, actual and revised quantity, just they keep on changing. If we write all of them down on a single sheet of paper, it becomes extremely easy for us to learn. All right, guys, once you are through with the formulas, trust me, implementation of the formulas, that is solving the questions, will be a cakewalk for you people. It becomes very easy. Yes, uh, one point where you will need to use your brains is calculation of RQ, that's revised quantity. Okay, uh, now this is what we have done. One way of learning the formulas. There is another way of learning the formulas. Sir, I can't remember so many things like, you know, SQ, SP, AQ, RQ. They all sound similar. For a student like me, it is a little difficult to remember. For those students, there is another approach which is called as a tabular approach. What I normally suggest my students is, as soon as we understand that the question is on material variances, our first job is, from the information in the question, prepare this table. Okay, what we do is, we prepare SQ, that's our SQ for you, and SP, given in the question. Multiply both of them, you get your first information. Then you take AQ and AP, again given in the question, multiply them, you get your AQ into AP, that's your second column. Now, what we do is, AQ is to be multiplied with SP. We get our third column. Calculate RQ. Now, RQ calculation, we are going to learn it. Don't worry about this. But then RQ, again, you just need to multiply it with SP. Then you get your four columns. One, two, three, four. All you need to do is understand the sequence. Two standard things at a time, their product. Two actual at a time, their product. Then actual quantity into standard price, RQ, 
priced quantity into standard price, our complete table is ready. Guys, once this table is done, getting answers is just implementing what is there. How? Let's look at this. All five formulas on the screen. Forget about what is written here in the yellow. Just focus on what is given there in red. I'm sure we can remember numbers. For 1, it is 1 minus 2. For 2, it is 3 minus 2 and so on. If you people can just do this, like, you know, uh, remember this particular screen, guys, you are completely through with material variances. You just don't have to worry about material variance. Remember this and our job's done. Read question, calculate them, put them in the answers. Okay, but then, sir, how will we know whether our answer is correct or wrong? Good. For that, we have something called verification. There are two verifications that we do. The first verification says, our material cost to variance is actually the sum total, sorry, sum total of our price and usage variances. Okay, because cost is actually the difference in the price and the usage. Similarly, our material usage is the sum total of our mix and yield variances. So, our MCV, whatever is the answer that we get, it should be equal to MPV plus MUV. Similarly, our MUV should be equal to MMV plus MYV. All right. So this is there. Right. Uh, guys, we are completely through with learning and understanding the formulas for every variance related to material. Now, what we are going to do is in the next class, we'll start solving some questions on price variances, uh, material variances. Alright, so till then, thank you guys. Thank you for watching this video. Take care. See you in the next time. Bye.